He's been able to remain as bullish uh, as he is, or at least more bullish than most. And now, none other than Jeffrey Gunlock. Today with Bob Pisani, mm -hmm. we are near peak inflation. Now, unless, of course, you have another surge in energy, he admits it's going to be sticky on wages and rents, but he thinks inflation is peaking. I'm wondering what you make of all of that. It could be peaking, um, and I hope it is, but it's still going to remain hot, and it doesn't change my thinking at all. I mean, sure, the headline number today wasn't as bad as feared, but let's go underneath the surface and look at some of the components. I know we're supposed to look at core, and we're supposed to exclude food and energy, but food and energy are huge. Food was almost up 9%. Energy is up 11%. Oh, by the way, WTI is up another $5 today. Soybeans are actually up quite a bit. Corn is at record high. So sure, maybe, maybe that the commodity side can uh, come down a little bit. But I just think that when you do look at wages at five and a half percent, when you do look at rents that are running about four and a half percent, the Dallas Fed expects that rents are going to be 6.9 percent by 2023. And we know rents follow home prices, which on average are up 15 percent around the country, in some places more. And it follows rents, it follows housing by about a year. So I think that you're going to continue to see pressure on the stickier parts of inflation. And again, the numbers are real and they're very very impactful and i don't think this is going to change the fed by going 50 basis points next meeting maybe 50 again the meeting thereafter well, we're going like to have to see what the data looks like stephanie Link sounds no, i'm not like a, a bear, bear because i'm not a bear i'm not a bear well, i'm just saying sound, inflation is going to stay hot it walks like inflation a dog, is going like to stay dog. hot let <laughs> me finish let let me finish right. so <laughs> if you look at pivoting Pivoting to pivoting to earnings, which I'm very excited about because we can stop focusing so much on the macro. It's still going to be out there. It's still important. But now we're going to hear real time what companies have to say. And let's just think what the expectations are. And I think they're actually probably conservative. About 5% earnings growth for the first quarter is expected for the S&P 500. And revenues, total revenues, about 10.8%. If you exclude financials, just as a, as a study and as a test, Earnings actually are going to come in, expected to come in about 12 percent, total revenues up 14 percent. And I think that that is really going to be a very healthy sign. And I think these stocks are a lot of them are down and out, particularly the cyclicals, particularly mm -hmm. in technology. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are opportunities. So I am not a bear by any means. I am balanced this year. Oh. And you know that that's what I've been doing in my portfolio all year long. All right. Touche. I hear you. Dr. J, so on the cyclicals mm -hmm. idea, Gunlock also said to stay short cyclicals and long defensive names. So, you know, dance with what's gotten you here, basically. Right? If you're worried about the economy, don't play the cyclicals. Uh, if you think that, you know, we could have some <coughs> trouble ahead, stay defensive. Staples, utilities, you know, the things that have worked lately, Doc. Yeah, and uh, just to touch on what Stephanie was saying briefly, Scott, um, the, uh, the president today said that he's going to increase uh, ethanol and gasoline. Um, we're already seeing corn prices that are double just two years ago, double. Um, and they're going to go significantly higher, Scott, because corn, of course, is a major component for most that you can use any biomass for ethanol. But in particular, corn is the one that they mainly use. And <coughs> corn is what we feed animals as well as, of course, human beings. So the prices going up there and more competition for corn means that, you know, given the nutrient cutoff we've talked about out of Ukraine because of Russian war, uh, I, I think we're likely to see significantly higher prices for foodstuffs. And, you know, we can always say, oh, you got to take out food and energy. Well, the American people aren't going to take that out, Scott. So you could say inflation's peaked by what the Fed measures it as, mm -hmm. but not by what Joe and Jane investor and people just sitting there at the shopping center and uh, basically look at their inflationary uh, inputs. Uh, They're going to continue to go higher. We okay. have not peaked by a long stretch. So, so D.